Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. You have tuned in to the Crockett Way. I am super excited to share the word with you today. I know it has been some time since we have shared with you, but we are back with another segment of In the Word. I trust and pray that you will be blessed by the word today. Now, before we jump into our lesson, let me say a quick word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you simply because of who you are, Lord Jesus. For Lord, you are God alone, and besides you, there is no other, my God. You are Alpha and Omega, my God. You are the beginning, and Lord, you are surely the end, my God. My God, my God, Lord, we love you today, O oh God. We praise your holy name, my God. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. We reference you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, my God. Lord, if it wasn't for you, God, we wouldn't be here today, my God. And Lord, we say thank you, O oh God. Lord, we say thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done, my God. All that you are doing, Heavenly Father, and everything that you are about to do, my God. We thank you for opening up the windows of heaven, O oh God, and pouring out your blessings, O oh God. So much that we don't even have enough room to receive, O oh God. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless this lesson today, O oh God. Lord, anoint this lesson, O oh God. Let somebody be blessed, O oh God. Let somebody be delivered, O oh God. Touch and anoint my lips, O oh God. Every word that comes out, my God. Let it come directly from you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for the prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's jump right into our lesson. Um, I want to speak today from the subject, do you know him? Do you know him? Many of us say that we know him. And when I say him, I am speaking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Many of us say that we know him, but do we really know him? On the surface, um, this seems like a very, very simple question. And you would think that a simple yes or no um, answer would suffice. But I believe in order to truly answer this question, there are a couple of prerequisite questions that must be answered. And the first question is, what does it mean to know someone? What does it mean to know someone? Now, I took the liberty of looking up the definition of the word know. And when I looked up the definition, I saw two definitions that were drastically different from one another. And I want to read those to you. The first definition reads, be aware of through observation, inquiry, or information. An example of this could be, you know who the CEO of your company is, but not actually ever meeting that person. In other words, you know of him or her. The second definition reads, have developed a relationship with someone through meeting and spending time with them. Be familiar or friendly with. An example of this could be you and your spouse or your, your children, parents, siblings. The whole point of this definition is that there is a developed relationship with that individual. As we can see here, as I said before, the definitions for this word are drastically different from one another. Now, the question that we must ask ourselves via self-evaluation is, which category does Jesus belong to for us? Which category does Jesus belong to for you? Do you just know of him through information or do you know him based on a developed relationship? If you only know of him, I'm here to tell you now that you do not know him at all because to know him is to serve him. Let me say that again. To know him is to serve him. And this is not just my words, Kendra's word, but this is the word of the Lord. And I'm going to show you that specifically in our scriptures for today. And our scriptures for today are going to be coming from 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. And we're going to also look at Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. And it reads, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that said, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that said he abided in, abided in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. What I love about this particular passage of scripture is, it is very plain and simple. It is easy to understand. 
um, there's no mixing of words, which takes away much interpretation. But the word is spoken clear as day. He says in his word, we do know that we know him, know him if we keep his commandments. So to know him comes with the condition you must keep his commandments. I said before, to know him is to serve him. And to serve him, we have to keep his commandments. Now, the question is, how do we learn of his commandments? We learn of his commandments by reading and studying his word, which is a part of developing a relationship with him. We must read and study the word of God. It is through the word of God that we find what to do and what not to do. It is our guideline. It is our GPS. So we must read and study his word. Now, the word speaks of many, many commandments throughout the Bible. But there are two commandments that I want to focus on in particular. And these commandments um, came from Jesus himself, which he called the two greatest commandments. And we find those in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40 reads, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Praise the Lord for the reading of his word. As we can see here, there is a key component in both of the commandments that Jesus gives us. And that key component is what? It is love. Love is the key. He says, first and foremost, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. Love the Lord thy God. It starts with him, you all. We have to love him first and foremost. We love him above everyone, even our family members, okay? Love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. And when you love him that way, you're going to read and study your word. You are going to pray with him because you desire a relationship with him. You're going to purpose in your heart to please him. Let me say that again. You are going to purpose in your heart to please him, which means that you're going to do everything in your power with the Holy Spirit to not do anything that's contrary to his word, to not do anything that's, that's going to go against what he tells you to do because you have a purpose to please him. Now, let's look at this in the natural sense. Let's just take a relationship between a husband and wife, for example. Now, not all marriages consist of real genuine love, but those that have real genuine love, you will see that most times they are successful. Um, even in when they have disagreement, it's that, that strong desire to please one another that allows them to get past disagreement. It's the love that they have for one another that allows them to come to a compromise, to meet in the middle. And it works the same with our Lord and Savior. In order to have a successful relationship or a relationship with God, we must love Him with all our heart, mind, and soul. And when we love Him that way, once again, we are going to purpose to please him, which means we will keep his commandments, which is the key to knowing him. Now, the second great commandment that the Lord gives us is to love thy neighbor as thyself. Again, love is the driving force. Love thy neighbor as thyself. So the way that you will treat yourself, treat your neighbor. The way that you will care for yourself, care for your neighbor, right? We have to love our neighbors the same way. And neighbors refers to anyone, any and everyone, regardless of race. Now, I understand that we are living in a, in a very social injustice time. We are obviously living in a world that's full with cold-hearted and hateful people. But no matter how one may view you, no matter how they may despise you, you love them anyway, because that is the commandment of the Lord, is to love thy neighbors as thyself. Have you ever heard the expression that love is the greatest weapon there is? I 100% agree with this statement because no matter how much somebody may hate you or despise you or, or wrong you or bring evil towards you, always fight back with love. You see, when you fight back with love, what you're really doing is you're fighting with God. You are allowing God to fight your battle because God is love. And when you fight with love, it will prevent you from committing ungodly acts or sins. Once again, it will prevent you from committing ungodly acts or sins. I know that it may seem that I, like I have gotten off topic, but I am right in line with my subject, which says, do you know him? 
and we know that the only way that we can possibly know him is by keeping his commandments. And the greatest two commandments that he gives us are centered around the word love. He says to love thy Lord, thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, to love thy neighbors as we love thyself. And this is why I believe he says in verse 40, he says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, to break any other commandment that he lists in the Bible means that you automatically break the first two. Let me say that one more time. To break any other commandment in the Bible means that you have automatically broken the first two commandments that he gives us as the greatest commandments. Looking back at our opening scriptures, I want to go back to 1 John 3 and 4. And it reads, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. In closing, I just want to say, if you do not know him, do not be one of those who are in denial, who deceives themselves or lie to yourself, but sincerely ask yourself, do you really know him? Or another way to put it, are you keeping his commandments? Okay. Um, and if you conclude that you don't know him or that you are not keeping his commandments, I sincerely urge you to get to know him while the blood is yet running warm in your veins because we do not know what tomorrow holds. And if we want our name written in the book of life, we must know him. Well, everybody, that concludes our lesson for today. I trust and pray that you were able to get something out of the word today. Um, thank you for watching all the way through. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you as a part of the Crockett Way family. And make sure you hit that post notification bell because we upload at least twice per week. And also comment on the video. Let us know what you think. Thank you and God bless.